Baba is a sign of respect for the elders. Baba Kaba, educator, and he started with Dr. Sadie since 1988. So you know whatever he's saying is gonna be that real. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kaba. Baba Kaba. <laughs> Peace, family. Hotep. I just want to uh, thank a few people. Uh, for one, I'd like to thank my brother Victor uh, for having this event. This is really a powerful event considering what it represents. I also want to thank my brother, Mr. G, who has made a lot of this so possible. Um, and just the work that he's doing in terms of health and nutrition. And of course we uh, pay homage and tribute uh, to all those that make it possible. And one of the things that I'm looking at as I think about Dr. Sabi <clears throat> is in New York we have a uh, newspaper. It's called the Amsterdam News. And it's an African African American newspaper come out every Wednesday and I remember that um, this was in October I was working I was on the bus and I used to get a subscription so every Wednesday I would get a copy of the Amsterdam News and on October 1st 1988 I read an article that said that Dr. Sabi I've been following the court case through the, uh, through the, the years but on this particular date, they said that he had been exonerated, he had been freed. Now, family, you know that any time a black man can be freed in court, I need to know who this is. So that Saturday, that's how I know when I first met Dr. Sabi, it was October 4th, 1988. Because I went down to his uh, Herbal Institute, which, by the way, is where the Barclay Center is. 616 Pacific Street right down there by Barclay. In fact, I think they put him out to build Barclays. And so I went there and I started a relationship with Dr. Sebi. And from that day on, because at the time my name was Booker T. So he said to me, oh, Booker T, okay. And so he and I, I used to go down and spend time and I used to order my products from Rio, um, Rio Piedras in Puerto Rico, where Sister Ma'a, his wife at that time was. So I used to order, because I used to get my Maya 24. You know, I didn't want to get one bottle at a time. I used to get the case. Because I tell people I drink Maya like an alcoholic drink liquor. Because that, you know, but you got to be in it to win it. You know, and, and for so many of us, we don't understand the importance of health and nutrition. It doesn't make a difference how spiritual you are, you, you can even have an a, a, a ongoing conversation with the Creator, but if your body not right, it don't make a difference. You can be one of the most phenomenal politicians in the world, but if your body's not right, it don't make a difference. You can be the greatest educator in the world, but if you don't have a right body, it's not going to work. So health and nutrition is a holistic approach that we have to have. And with my time with Dr. Sabi, I came to understand certain things. Now, I want to stick a pin there because I want to take you back to 1981 when I was introduced to a uh, workshop series. Uh, it was called First World Alliance and they invited a, um, a scholar by the name of Dr. Richard King. He was a melanist and he was a psychiatrist and I went and he was talking about melanin. Now I had first heard about melanin in the 70s through another great scholar by the name of Dr. Frances Cress Welsey. She spoke about melanin. But that wasn't the topic that she was talking about, so that word entered and left my mind. But now in 1981, being exposed to Dr. Richard King, and he could tell that a lot of us didn't really understand what he was saying. So he said, okay, brothers and sisters, let me tell it to you like this. If you can understand plant photosynthesis, you can understand human photosynthesis because the chlorophyllian molecule is to the plant what melanin molecule is to the human. If you can understand the chloroplast, which is a 
a, a botanical or a, or a, a plant cell, then you can understand melanocyte, which is a melanin cell. So I got deep into melanin. I went back, I, at the time I was a kindergarten teacher, by the way, that's my background. I, I retired from the Board of Ed in um, uh, 2009, after 31 years, three months, and 15 days with our children at South Central Bronx. Oh yeah, I count the days, <laughs> and the months too, uh, because they're all very valuable. But I spent my time working with our children, and I taught them melanin. Because I understood that with what our children face in this society, that will tell them that everything they look like is bad and everything that's so far away from them is good, I said, no, I'm, we're going to reverse this. So I studied melanin and I began to teach it to children in classrooms. And family to this day, I've got people who are parents and grandparents who get on, on Facebook or on Instagram and remind me of some of the things I taught them when they were in my kindergarten class my first grade class because of the nature of understanding how great you are and the greatest fear that Western civilization has is when we wake up and understand how great we are I don't talk about superiority or inferiority I don't talk about better or worse that's not scientific terms when you study melanin and you understand melanin, in science you talk about dominant and recessive genes. Science can't argue with that. They've tried, but they can't. Because I can go into science books and show them, but you see, when they teach our children about dominant and recessive genes, they only deal with plants. They deal with albino peacocks, but they will not tell you what the human side of that is. And so as I was teaching melanin to the children and as I was developing my relationship with Dr. Sebi, one day I was in, going to do a presentation in Brooklyn on melanin. So I invited Dr. Sebi to come. And he came, right? And he came, he sat in the back, and he checked me out, okay? He sat down. And crossed his arms and he was checking me out so at the end he left and then when I went back to uh, the Herbal Institute I said Dr. Sebi what you think about my uh, presentation on melanin he said Booker T that was my name before I corrected it he said Booker T you're always talking about melanin all of you are always talk about melanin, but it was carbon before melanin. I think one of my greatest advantages is that I take notes. When Brother KT was talking, I was back there taking notes. I always take notes, because you never know when you're going to remember. And I have to tell you, I don't always rely on my memory. So I take notes. So I decided to study carbon. Just like I decided to study melanin, I studied carbon and I developed an understanding of it. But it's not just carbon as we know it on the earth. It's carbon that comes out of the cosmos. There is a cosmic melanin. It's known as nano diamonds. It is when the blackness of the universe pushes in on itself so tight so hard there's no more space in this little black seed so it implodes and when it implodes it gives birth to the stars stars are crystallized blackness just like diamonds on earth crystallized blackness just like humans on earth that's why grandma used to say you're a diamond in the rough you're on your way to being a diamond but you're still black and so I studied this and then I applied it to melanin and then I began to understand what Dr. Sebi was saying because you see family I was here last year celebrating Dr. Sebi and I've been here years before 
with Sister Ma'at celebrating Dr. Sebi. You can go online and find out everything you need to know about Dr. Sebi. You can read our brother Mr. G's book, Travels with Dr. Sebi, okay? What I want to do today is I want to make it so that the person that's going to leave this room today is not the person that came in and sat down. We have to make a difference in our lives. And we have to bequeath this. We have to give this to our children. And I got a hundred year plan. My plan is for children that will never have ever experienced me on a physical level. I want them to understand how great they are. And that the greatest fear that this society has is that you're going to find out that when you understand melanin, which is the cell, okay, my bad, melanin is the molecule, the carbon is the atom. Now you saw when Brother KT was putting those different symbols up there where carbon is like cosmic glue. Carbon, for instance, you have four major atoms on the earth. Could be more, could be less, but we're going to deal with the four major ones. You have hydrogen, you have nitrogen, you have oxygen, you have carbon. You can put two parts hydrogen together, you get, and one part oxygen, you get water. You can put two parts hydrogen together, two parts oxygen together, and you get hydrogen peroxide. The same thing works with nitrogen, but you can only put no more than four of those atoms together in order to create a molecule. But when you introduce the carbon atom, carbon can not only bind with itself, it binds with all the other atoms that creates the millions of molecules that exist on our earth. In fact, when people say organic, Organic means that it has assimilated carbon. Carbon is the living factor, the electricity. This is what Dr. Sebi was telling us. You see, but Dr. Sebi used to approach it a certain way. You know, uh, Dr. Sebi, well for instance, one time I was uh, with Dr. Sebi and he was talking about, um, uh, he was talking about uh, electricity on the earth and about plants. And he used the term photovoltaics. And I said, wow, I had my notebook out. I wrote photo. I said, Dr. Sabi. I raised my hand. He said, yeah. I said, how do you spell photovoltaics? Dr. Sabi said, how the hell do I know? You're the teacher. <laughs> Say true words. See, Dr. Sabi just did that. <laughs> so that's the way Dr. Sabi was. He loved to curse, too, but I'll leave that alone. But I wrote down photovoltaics, photo light voltaics electricity. For instance, the indigenous population in America and indigenous populations that, that dealt with agriculture, here in America they had what they called the three sisters. They had beans, corn, squash. They had seasons for these three different crops. So that when the sun shone down and squash was being grown, it was a healthy squash because of photovoltaics, the light that created the electricity in the earth. But at the same time, not only did it create a good squash crop, but the squash crop enriched the earth in order for the next crop to be enriched through photovoltaics. And then when the squash was, uh, when the corn was growing, the sunlight, photovoltaics coming down, created the type of relationship that would make the third crop rich. So photovoltaics is the light, heat, and sound energy that comes from the sun that enriches the earth and creates an electricity. This is what carbon is. And this is what Dr. Sebi was attempting to tell us, that our body is electric. Our body is fundamentally electric. But in that electricity, there is a relationship with magnetism because electrical currents create magnetic fields. When the magnetic field is good, 
it creates electrical currents. So you can see the relationship in nature. And that is what Dr. Sebi did. Dr. Sebi had all the herbs, he had all the wonderful things that he had, but the one thing I remember Dr. Sebi always telling us is none of these herbs are gonna work if you don't love yourself. If you don't know yourself. And that's what we have to do for our children. We have to help them know themselves. I decided to write a series of books. My latest book is dedicated to Dr. Sabi. He is one of the in individuals that I do libation to in the book. It's called, the subtitle, well the, the, the book is called Carbon Before Melanin because that's what he told me when I asked him how was my presentation. And he said, Booker T, you're always talking about melanin. But it was carbon before melanin. And I often thought like it's like taking a family picture and you're leaving your grandparents out. Well, that's not a family picture. It's a family, but it ain't a full family. And you can't understand the family if you don't understand the grandparents that gave birth to everybody else. And that's what carbon is. And that's what Dr. Sabi meant when he said it's, it's carbon before melanin. There's a chapter that I dedicate to understanding carbon. And you see, family, I come from the school of Malcolm X. Malcolm used to say, make it plain. Don't get deep. Because I'm talking to our community. I'm talking to our community who are on a sixth grade level. I taught sixth grade. So I know the vocabulary to use to talk to our community, to help them through this maze that they're experiencing. Okay? We all getting it twisted now, since November. We all getting twisted, what's gonna happen? Okay? My name is Plantation Man. I think like I'm on a plantation. And I ask you, do you think Harriet Tubman ever cared who the president was when she was on the Underground Railroad? It didn't make a difference who the president was. Malcolm told us that Democrats are Sly foxes and Republicans are brute wolves, but they both belong to the dog family. None of them mean us any good. If it's gonna be, it's up to me. That should be our proverb every morning we wake up. You look in the mirror, right after you tell yourself, I love you, you say, if it is to be, it's up to me. I gotta do this. Don't depend on nobody. Our ancestors didn't, and you should see how far they got. They got us this far. And when you think of your ancestors, you think of how many people are in you right now? Each and every one of you in this room right now, I'm gonna tell you something. And I thank Ancestral Footprints for dropping this knowledge on me. If a generation is 25 years in length, And if I took you back 20 generations, basically 500 years, if I took you back to the year 1524, considering each and every one of us has two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great-grandparents, in our direct and indirect lineage, when you're thinking about how many ancestors dwell within you, if I took you back 500 years, I'm going to tell you how many people it took for you to be sitting in this room right now. If I took you back 500 years, understanding two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, if I took you back 500 years, it took 1,048,000 576 human beings to come into existence to give birth to each and every one of you. So next time you think you're alone, you think of all those ancestors that you are walking with every day of your life. My brother, Mr. G, he told me that this was the chair that Dr. Sabi used to sit in when he would speak here. He said to me, Mr. G, he, he asked me earlier, do I want to go up on the podium? 
do I want to sit in the seat? And I said, no, I want to stand up. Because Dr. Sebi is in that seat. And I don't want to sit in his lap. But my real question to you is this. Can you see him in that seat? See, this is the key. See, they keep telling us that if we listen to the voices in our head, we're crazy. But they're really very much afraid. If you start listening to your ancestors, those 1,048,576 human beings, but let me drop the other shoe. Because if you got 1,048,576 human beings over the past 500 years, how many do you think you have if I took you back 5 million years? Think of that number and understand, family, you never walk alone. This is science, family. This is not emotion, and I'm not in the twilight zone. This is science. Two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great-grandparents. If I took you back 20 generations, but what happened if I took you back 2,000 generations? And then, when we went all the way back to be before the beginning began, you only have one ancestor, and that's the creator. You are the creator having a human experience. So next time you want to look out there, next time you want to look in here, understand, this morning, you watched the creator brush his her teeth. Because fam, I can't handle this man only God. My, my brain can't get around that. The creator is both male and female. Because that's who we are. Each and every one of us is half man and half woman. By nature of having a father and a mother. This is just science. And this is what Dr. Sabi was trying to drop on us. And this is why he used to always say, how the hell do I know? You go out and do it. Every question I asked him, he said, how the hell do I know? Go out and then find out yourself. And then when you find out, come back and tell me. <laughs> I came back and told him how to spell photovoltaics. <laughs> this is how deep it was with Dr. Sabi. Okay? He was a natural man dealing with a natural issue. And that is the total emancipation and liberation of us as a people. And he was trying to get our body right. And he was explaining to us the foods that we're eating is not conducive to our existence. We are an electric people because of melanin, because of carbon. We are electric. We need things that activate our electricity. We have to understand what it is to develop that electricity. And this is what Dr. Sebi meant. Electricity. My brother, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. Brother T from the Black Seed Brothers up there on 139th Street and, and um, Malcolm X Boulevard. If y'all get a chance, go up there and get that watermelon from that brother. He got the black seeds. Dr. Sabi used to tell me to have a fruit that doesn't have a seed is like a human being born without a reproductive system. If somebody said to me, okay, you can only eat one thing. For the rest of your life, there's only one thing you're going to eat. Anybody want to volunteer what you might eat? Woja melon with seeds. Because a watermelon seed can produce upwards of 4 to 16 other watermelons. So if you eat the seed, you are actually getting the nutrients that's going to create a whole bunch of other watermelons. People say, well, the seeds are too hard. I say, well, you eat peanuts, don't you? Eating seed is not anything different than eating anything else that might have a little bit more of a texture to it. These are real things that we have to deal with, family. These are real issues that we have to deal with. Since I've been going up to 139th Street with black seeds, I ain't bought a watermelon nowhere else on the planet. Not to mention, we got to support our own. And so what Dr. Sabi was telling us is to understand watermelon is one of the most perfect foods you can eat. 
it has everything that you need for you to survive, both liquid and solid form. These are the kinds of things that I wanted to share with you so that as we move forward, we can understand what we got to do as a people. And so when I wrote Carbon Before Melanin, I included a couple of things to help us understand. Before we got into the chapter on carbon, I wanted to introduce you to some work that was done by a brilliant professor by the name of Carol Barnes. <coughs> in, his <coughs> in his book, <coughs> Melanin, the Chemical Key to Black Greatness, <coughs> he lists the facts about melanin. And then he lists melanin's potential. So before I even got into the book, I wanted the reader to understand facts about melanin. I wanted us to understand the potential of melanin. You know when you get a cut on your skin and all, automatically a dark area in, envelops that? That's melanin. That's your doctor getting ready to operate on you. And you know this thing that everybody says it looks so ugly as keloid skin? That's the best thing that could happen because keloid skin is the over-ripening of your skin so that you don't cut it again. This is just science. Then, Dr. Richard King, in his book, Melanin Key to Greatness, he has a glossary. Because as a teacher, I always wondered why they put the glossary or the vocabulary in the back of the book. You should put the vocabulary in the front of the book. Because a lot of people read a book from front to back, and by the time they get to the back, they realize that, wow, here's the definitions that I didn't know when I was reading the book. But a lot of times, if you don't go back and read it, then you're not going to be able to understand it. So I put a glossary so that you could understand from Dr. Richard King's perspective what these words meant. But you see, I also understand how things happen. And it's interesting, family, how we develop ourselves and how we are such a great people, but we don't really realize it because when somebody puts you down for so long and you accept, power is the ability to define someone's reality and have that person accept that definition as if it were their own. They've been telling us who we are for so long, we begin to believe what they've been saying. And when someone teaches a perfect lie, the truth is unbelievable. People tell me, man, what you're talking about is crazy. You out of your cotton-picking mind. And I say, yeah, I am out of my cotton-picking mind. The problem is you're in a cotton-picking mind. You need to get up out that cotton-picking mind and own your greatness, understand who you are. In, in my book, I do a piece on hair and what makes hair kinky, nappy, frizzy, curly, straight, okay? Kinky hair, the follicles are flat, okay? In straight hair, the straighter the hair gets, the rounder the follicle, uh, the, the follicle is. When we were in that warm climate, like in Honduras, or like in Central or Southern Africa, when we were there and that sun shone down on us, there are three different types of sun rays. There's A, B, and there's UVA, UVB, and UVC. Some are very good, some never get to the earth, and some are what creates problems. And so in a hot climate, when you're in a hot climate, your hair is your protector. And inside your scalp, when you get down into your sebaceous gland, in your hair shaft, in your sebaceous gland, you have a sac of an oily, waxy substance that's called sebum, S-E-B-U-M. I'm a teacher, I, I spell. Because if y'all are taking notes and you want to know what I'm saying, you want to write that down. Sebum. Sebum, the little packets open up and allow the sebum oil to come up to the scalp. And it bathes wherever your hair is, all over your body, but because you got so much on your, your head, it bathes your scalp. It is what 
prevents the harmful rays of the sun from coming in to cause different types of diseases. Okay? At the same time, that sebum, when attached to your hair, it creates an elliptical shape that's a kink or a nap. And so the next time black folk have a problem with nappy hair, you better thank God your ancestors had nappy hair because they would all died of cancer if you, they had not had nappy hair. Science, not personal, not superior, inferior. I would never teach superiority or inferiority. I'm talking about dominant and recessive genes. And the closer you get to black, the closer you get to the original human being. And as you move away from that African, you then become the different human beings because when Africans moved to other parts of the world, the sun didn't shine that hard. It didn't shine that great. And then when they were exposed to an ice age about 50,000, 40,000 years ago, then all of a sudden all hell broke loose. So then they had to adapt. This melanated, kinky hair, a uh, wide-nosed, thick-lipped African had to adapt because of the lack of sunlight that came down. And I saw Brother KT had something that he was talking about, vitamin D3. Everybody say vitamin D is good for you. But nobody tell you there's four different types of vitamin D. There's D1, D2, D3, D4. D1, D2 is inactive in you. Now, when the sun shines on you, the sunlight, you have five layers of your epidermis, okay? Because we science here, we ain't personal. You have the stratum corneum, stratum luciderm, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, st uh, and the stratum basale. Stratum means layer or, 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 or stratification. In the bottom two layers of your skin, in the stratum spinosa and stratum basale, see this is what Dr. Sabi did to me. He made me study this. That's why I used to come back and tell him. He said, I'm glad you, I'm glad you do that, because I ain't. You have, a, you have a biochemical known as 7-dehydrocholesterol. Number seven, D-E-H-Y-D-R-O-C-H-O-L-E-S-T-R-O-L. -E -E okay. When the sunlight hits your skin, it's absorbed down into your epidermis, and when activated by the 7 dehydrocholesterol, your inactive vitamin D1 and 2 is then activated to become vitamin D3 and D4, and that's what you need in order to be able to assimilate carbon and other things in your body. Okay? Now, when Africans moved out of the hot climate into the cold climate, they had to make up for the relationship between the sun and the skin. So the first thing they did is what all of us are doing right now. Okay, no matter how well pigmented you may be now, not only is your hair going to get straighter, but your skin pigmentation is going to get lighter. The same way when you go into the summer, it gets darker. It's not superiority or inferiority, it's the sun, okay? And people of European descent with, with straight hair they have kinky hair too, but they don't call it kinky. In the summertime, they go out and get all that frizzies. Because they call it frizzy. They don't call it nappy. But we know it's nappy. We know it's nappy. Okay? Science. This is what Dr. Sabi did for us. He made us study ourselves. And that is what I will forever be grateful to Dr. Sabi for doing for me. He made me study. And you know something, he might have known how to spell photovoltaics. But he said, let me get this guy since he got all the questions. Let him go out there and find out how to spell it. He might have, he might have known everything I asked him questions for. He used to tell me, go out and tell, you the teacher, go out and tell it. Find out for yourself. He probably knew it. But he just wanted me to go out actively to find out because the bottom line is if you really want the information, you're going to step out there and get that information. If you don't want to get it, then that's on you. And so as the African moved into the colder climate, their hair, the sebum that was released, no longer attached itself to the scalp. And when it attached itself to the hair follicle, 
it laid on the hair follicle and that's what made nappy hair straight. It's just science. But to take this a little bit step uh, further, I've got my books in the back if you're interested, Carbon Before Melanin, dedicated to many of our scholars and particularly Dr. Sabi. But I wanted to teach us how to teach the children. Melanin is in every part of your body. And the evidence of it, it is, it is that the carbon that created the melanin molecule that activated the body and gave it life is what makes your lungs breathe. It's what makes your blood circulate. It's what makes your reproductive organs reproduce. It's what makes your heart beat, your, your brain think, your skeletal system strong, your muscular system built. Melanin is the mother ship where the captain of that mother ship is carbon. And that's what Dr. Sabi was telling us. So I not only want to lay out melanin as it relates to the properties of the sun. You've got to study the sun to understand melanin. You have to understand plant life or botany. You have to understand human life. You have to understand your brain because your brain really is where the original melanin came through neuromelanin. You know, when, when you were first conceived, okay, you were a zygote in your mommy's um, uterus. And then as your cells multiplied through mitosis, you became a blastula which is a collection of cells. When that collection of cells came into existence, there were three parts to it, three circles. You had what the outside was called the ectoderm, E-C-T-O-D-E-R-M. The middle one was the mesoderm, M-E-S-O. -E and the inside ring was the endoderm. In your ectoderm on the outside, it's totally black with melanin. That outside is going to turn in on that blastula and that's what's going to create your brain, your spinal column, all of your intestines, your gastrointestinal site, all of your organs and glands is going to come right there. The first 28 hours is the most important time in a uh, conception of a child. 28 hours after conception are the most important hours in the existence of that embryo. Now I know that there are sisters and brothers, sisters in particular, I gotta to talk to sisters because you're the one that's God's laboratory to bring forward children. And I know that when you find out that you are pregnant, you say, okay, gotta stop smoking, gotta stop drinking, gotta stop other things. But two of the saddest words in the English language, too late. 28 hours, the first 28 hours of your pregnancy was the most important time in the development of that particular fetus. And that's what KT meant when he was talking about this. About in Africa and in the indigenous populations, you were getting ready to have children long before you got married. It was these types of herbs that you took and the drinks that you drank that got your body ready for your reproductive system to be healthy to give birth to babies. But you see, oh, I'm going to stop partying, or oh, I'm not going to wear these heels no more. Well, it's too late. 28 hours is the most important time in the, um, in the gestation of a child. I have a section on that in the book to help us understand the importance of doing that. I touch on every system of the human body and I show you where melanin is. And remember, melanin is the molecule, but carbon is the atom. You know, people say to me, well, <laughs> can you, uh, what's, the dip, dip, what's the difference between an atom and an element and a molecule? And what I do is I, I take you to an ice cream store. I say, here's how I'm going to explain it. An atom is a flavor. The element is the scoop of ice cream. Okay, so you have chocolate. 
chocolate atom. The, the molecule would be the scoop of chocolate ice cream. And then when you put different molecules, different flavors of ice cream on that big ice cream that you know Dr. Sabi said don't eat, after you put all those molecules, uh, after you put all of those elements together, which is the ice cream scoop, that's a molecule. What creates that molecule is carbon. And it becomes important that as we begin to deal with these principles, we understand that every part of your body is energized electrified by carbon. What gave you life was carbon. What gave the sun life was carbon. What gave our galaxy life was carbon. Not the carbon that we know on Earth because once on Earth it manifests itself differently because of the nature of the Earth's atmosphere and things like that. But when you get up into the cosmos and if you don't believe me tonight when you go on home look up in the sky. What do you see? You don't see nothing but blackness. But since now you know that stars are crystallized blackness, even if you're looking at stars, you're looking at blackness. You're just looking at crystallized blackness. And then, just to wrap all this up, I had to take it to the next step. I had to give you three examples of melanin at its finest. There happen to be three sisters. Brothers, we got it too, but I wanted to highlight the sisters because we're in the age of Hapi or the age of Aquarius, which is the age of the female. Sisters, you in charge for the next 2,160 years. Brothers may not admit it, but you are in charge. I'm going to tell you that now. And if you don't believe me, read a book called Sibyls. S-I-B-Y-L-S. S-I-B-Y-L-S. You can go to Amazon and check it out if you want to do it that way. Or get a black bookstore to just order a whole bunch. Give them the business. S-I-B-Y-L-S. -S. It'll tell you the power that sisters have. See, brothers inspire, sisters shape. That's the female and male energy. So I chose as my first example of melanin at its finest, a sister by the name of, I call her Empress. <clears throat> Empress Henrietta Lacks. For those of you who know Henrietta Lacks, you know that this sister, she died in 1951. <clears throat> and they took some of her cells. And what they found interesting about her cells, by mistake by the way, because they were doing experiments, but they, they found that her cells were multiplying, still. And so, they began to test it. And there's a man by the name of Salk, who went down to Tuskegee Institute. They, they have a whole display on Henrietta Lacks and this man, Dr. Salks. Went down there and studied Henrietta Lacks's cells. And nine months later, he had polio. Or they said he had polio. They say. Every disease that has existed, they've used Henrietta Lacks's to study. And I'm telling black folk, look, man, because you know the family sued John Hopkins. Okay? And I'm you know, I'm telling us as a people, you know, we you know we gotta study ourselves. We don't know how great we are. They know how great we are. That's why they study us. And that's why I tell brothers, don't ever go to prison. Because when you go to prison with all the other things that are going to happen to you when you're in the prison, because I taught at Rikers. I taught at Atwater Penitentiary out there uh, near Fresno, California. I taught, they, they, they have a children's, uh, I call it prison, up in Wingate, New York. It's called Harlem Valley Secure Center. I taught there. Because I've been studying us from every different angle. Some of the most brilliant people I've ever met in my life have been in prison or in special ed. Brilliant. And part of the reason why they're in prison and in special ed is because they're so brilliant the society is deathly afraid of them. Because they operate by a different code of conduct. They think differently because their neurons are connected differently. Their neuromelanin is activated differently. 
And so as we move through this process and we look at Henrietta Lacks, check this out. Henrietta Lacks's cells were taken into space and they found that her cells multiply quicker in space than they do on Earth. I got a piece in the book about her. I call her Empress Henrietta Lacks. We don't know. Many of us are alive today because of her. Many of us more would be more alive if we took over the study of ourselves to understand because this is what Dr. Sabi was telling us. He was saying you are greater than you can ever imagine. But we just don't know. It's inside but we got to bring it out. You know you have every bit of information that has ever existed, that exists now and that will ever exist. I'll prove it to you. Or at least I'm going to offer you a thought about it. Imagine us, all the lights are out, you can't see a thing. And then all of a sudden you find a light switch and you turn it on and you see the chairs, the tables, the camera, the balloons, lights. My question to you, did all those things appear in the room when you turned the light on? No, they were always there, your light just wasn't on. So when I've taught our children, I've always taught them from the perspective, you already know what I'm saying. All I'm doing is I'm educing out of you, because that's what education is. Education ain't about putting anything in. It's about drawing out to educe, educare, is to draw out. And so our sister, Empress Henrietta Lacks, they're still using her cells for everything, including the food that we eat. The second person that I highlighted for melanin was a sister by the name of Sister. She a Roman Catholic nun. Her name was Sister Mary Wilhelmina. She died a couple years back. They buried her. But then they wanted to give her a proper burial. So they went back in to take her out, but they noticed that the casket that she was in had cracked. She had no structural damage to her body. It's called corrupt body. Your body corrupts or it begins to change its, its ways. She looked just like when she was buried, just as melanated. That's what our Kush Kemet ancestors were doing in embalming. And you know something? She wasn't embalmed. And her body remained the same for four years. It was incorruptible. There's an article about her. You know people from all around the world go to her site and pray. They want to make her a saint. St. Mary Wilhelmina. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Europeans, Asians, everybody come to her site and, and they pray over her and pray, will you help me out? They pray to her. Okay, like they pray to Our Lady of Fatima. They pray to Sister Mary Wilhelmina. We don't know this. It happened that I happened to come upon an uh, article that spoke about it, but then I, again, I got in deep, took my notebook out and started studying. The third person that I chose was a sister that is still with us because I didn't want to just pick ancestors that had joined the ancestors. I picked a sister by the name of Dr. May Carol Jemison. Dr. Jemison, see when they first started sending people into space they sent European males. <clears throat> they gave a, a pre-meeting a, a, a pre and a post. They examined them before they went into space and they examined them when they came back. When the early astronauts of European descent came back, they found that in their pelvic region, in zero gravity, the calcium is impacted, okay? Which has to do, zero gravity means when you start to float in space. Because we walk on the earth, there's a relationship between our legs and our pelvic region. But once you start floating, that relationship is no longer there. So what begins to happen is there's a corruptness in your pelvic region that leads to bone deformation. 
Okay, remember what I said about 7-dehydrocholesterol. Okay. Then they sent an African-American man into space. And they found during the post-observation uh, uh, medical that the African-American male had minuscule amount of bone deformation and zero gravity. Then they sent a European woman into space. And they found that she had less bone deformation in zero gravity than the European male, but more than the African man. And then they sent up Mae Jameson. In Mae Jameson's portfolio, one of the things that they have in their portfolio are jobs that they have to do in space. In her portfolio, her job was to study bone deformation in space. Not only that, but she brought HeLa cells, Henrietta Lacks' cells into space. She the one that found out that they multiplied more in space than they did on the Earth. You ain't an Earthling. You're a Starling. We're just caught up in this thing we call a tomb. It's a body. But the spirit of life is in us. We came from there. I'm not talking about aliens. I'm talking about light and heat energy. Right after Mae Jameson came back from space, she had zero bone deformation in space. And then an article came out and it was quickly taken down. It was an article that said that the strongest humans on the planet Earth is the black woman. I have an article in my book, two articles in fact, that talk about the genetic advantage melanated people have in space because we are of the space. We are of carbon. When someone tells a perfect lie, the truth is unbelievable. Family, I know some of the things I'm saying to you, I, I, I see sister. <laughs> I understand. I understand. My blessing was that I was introduced to a scholar when I was 12 and a half. His name was Professor John Henry Clark. And in being exposed to his brother, he guided me through my young life through an understanding of how great we are as a people. And I was so impacted by this elder brother that taught me how great I was, I dedicated my life to teaching our children that. It's important that we have a hundred year plan. See, they be planning for, for a long time. They, they plan generations. I'm planning generations too. I'm asking us, where do we want our children to be in the year 21, 24? Where do we want them in 21, 24? I'm planning for children that won't even probably know I existed. That's my plan. So family, as we come together and we honor our brother, our ancestor, Dr. Sebi, each and every one of us who has been in his presence, directly or indirectly, have been impacted by him. If somebody said to me, give me a name of somebody that had an impact on the direction of your life, Dr. Sebi had an impact on my life on so many different ways. And I will be forever thankful for having come his way. And I thank the ancestors. You know, we just celebrated misgiving. Some people call it Thanksgiving. <laughs> but I give thanks for Dr. Sebi. I thank the creator and all of his ancestors that brought him forward for us. And I thank him for coming here because he always loved Brooklyn. He always talked about what Brooklyn did for him. Well, I was a brother coming from the Bronx to come down to Brooklyn to sit at that brother's feet and to begin to take notes on what this brother was trying to tell me about my health and nutrition. And I'm encouraging you to support this venture. Support those that come before you. They say money is the root of all evil, but I'm going to tell you something. Money is also the root of our emancipation and liberation. 
because the more you support Brother KT, the more you support Victor, the more you support Mr. G, the more you support me and all the other scholars that have your best interests at heart, your best interests at heart will be met. And it's important that you support that. Put aside some money and make sure you go to your vendors. Make sure that you go to your community vendors in the street and do business with them. Because the better they are, the better we'll be. Peace, family. Y'all gotta clap louder than that. We not, we not about to do that right now. Y'all gotta clap louder for the father himself. Father Pablo. Straight from the front, just like I'm from. There we go, there we go. We don't go there, we don't wear Brooklyn, we ain't go there. That's it. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, brother. Family. I love you.